Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you doing today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? Good. I hope good. I hope you had a great weekend. I had an amazingly productive weekend and uh, that was because Em was out of town and when she's out of town I, I tend to overcompensate uh, by doing way too much. <laughs> and um, I, Is it possible to do too much? I don't know. I think my fear, my biggest fear in life is being lazy. Uh, just the idea of being lazy scares me to death so when she's not around I tend to just go crazy and I did that Friday night I spent with the girls we hung out and uh, cooked dinner together and just kind of goofed around Saturday I worked on the new channel a lot uh, so two things needed to happen for the new channel for one I needed to get uh, the lighting figured out Number two, I needed to get some artwork done. And number three, the biggest one, is I needed um, some sort of way to film game pieces without it being cluttered. I did it on this table a couple of times with a piece of carpet. The piece of carpet wasn't big enough, so if I, if I moved the camera the wrong way, you could see all this garbage on the table. It looked terrible. So I wanted to build something, like a prop, and that's what I did. I built a prop gaming table. It's completely fake. Uh, it would not stand up to any use whatsoever. Uh, and it was just made out of stuff I had laying around. I had a piece of quarter inch plywood laying around, so I cut it to dimensions that I felt were adequate enough to display a game on. Uh, I had some one by material laying around, which I cut up to make a base for that, so it would at least be somewhat rigid. I had the fabric from my sound panel project left over, so I used that as the fabric for the top of it. Uh, it's not padded in any way. And then I, I wanted to make a handrail so it looks like a board gaming table, so I used some scrap pine, you know, just regular 1x4 pine that had some knots in it, but I was able to cut pieces out uh, around those knots. I stained it gray and made a handrail and put it all together. And I'll tell you what, on camera, it looks great. It looks completely believable. Uh, if you just saw pictures, you'd say, man, that's a really nice table. Where'd you get it? It's not a table. It's one corner of a table. <laughs> and if you leaned on it, it would collapse. So I built that on Saturday. And then I got lights for that table. I have lights for my, my area. But I wanted lights for that table so that I'm not moving stuff around. But I don't want to spend the crazy amount of money I spent on the lights for my area because... I don't need, uh, you know, a direct light. I need softer light. So I went out and picked up a couple of just regular, those like $5 dome lights, projectors. And I took some uh, leftover post office boxes and cut them up and lined them with aluminum foil. And I made some nice softbox lights and I'm really proud of them and they work really really well if you see the pictures of the board games on the table they look really nicely lit uh, the shadows are nice the light fall off is nice the details on the pieces are nice it turned out great I'm really proud of it and uh, I also didn't want to buy light stands because they're expensive so I just ripped a 2x4 down and made a couple of really really I don't want to say unsafe but the lights these light stands are not recommended <laughs> but they work and so i was able to film some reviews this weekend i filmed the overview footage the like game pieces footage for three games and then i recorded uh my talking to the camera portion for four games because one of them is a switch game and uh that was i did all that on sunday i finished up setting up stairs oh sunday i had to make a base for that box that box was just literally a box it doesn't sit on anything uh, i could sit it on a table anywhere uh to shoot but i wanted to build a base to sit it on when it's up in the studio so i just grabbed some two by fours cut them down real quick and made a stand to put it on and so i got all that set up on sunday got the camera out filmed all that stuff did my part and um then we had a soccer game and after the soccer game we played a game of exit so all of this happened. Oh, I got grass cut. I did laundry. I did a whole lot this weekend. It was really, really busy. And um, to the point that I made myself exhausted. 
but it is what it is. The worst part of all of this, this whole story, though, is I shot these four reviews, and none of them are usable. <laughs> They're all terrible. And not because I said things wrong or I said things weird, but uh, because the lighting was really not good. I didn't have... I have a key light. It's on this side of me now, and I had a fill light, but where the fill light was positioned, it didn't fill in my eyes. And so when I look down and I look up... I have this like really, you can see it now, it's kind of like this, this really sharp, d evil looking shadowy look, and I did not like that at all. So I repositioned, uh, and the audio was horrible. I think I had some settings messed up on my little audio interface, and it was all hissy, and it was just a pain. It was a pain to try to clean it up, so I said, you know what, I'm going to redo the lighting, and I'm going to reshoot I came home today, I did some audio tests, I did some lighting tests, and tried it again, and I'm pretty happy. Uh, I still have, I have this main key light here, shining directly on me. I'll put some, maybe I'll put some pictures up here, some footage up here. I have really harsh shadows behind me, and because of how close I'm sitting to the backdrop, I don't know if I can get rid of those. Maybe if I put some lights around the bench where I'm sitting so to project upwards, I could get rid of those harsh shadows. But hopefully they're not horrible. I think they look horrible, but hopefully they're not so bad that people won't watch the videos. We'll see. So I'm going to hopefully, I haven't reviewed any of that footage yet. Hopefully some of it's usable and I can piece together something because I've put a lot of energy into this and I'm ready to uh, show it to the world. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to do this channel. It's going to be fun. And if I can batch out videos, I shot four reviews in one day. If I can do that on a weekend and, you know, four is probably stretching it. If I could do three a week, that'd be pretty awesome. I could do three reviews a week and just keep cracking them out. I have hundreds of games to go through. I don't, you know, we'll see what happens. So I had a busy weekend. How was your weekend? Let me know in the comments down below. I really love hearing from you. I appreciate you being here, um, and uh, I appreciate you participating in the conversation. So thank you for being here, as always. Thank you for liking and commenting and subscribing and being wonderful people, being amazing friends. I appreciate you, and I will see you tomorrow. Hey, Doc, wait! I want to ask you something. Taser, in fact, comes from SpanglerCandy.com. How did the Dum Dum get its name? Dum Dums were originated by Akron Candy Company in Bellevue, Ohio in 1924. I.C. Barr, the early sales manager of the company, named the ball-shaped candy on a stick figured Dum Dums was a word any child could say.